Elementary Electroplating Experiments, Part 5. Copper Plating the Chimney Cap. Finding out the hard way. Before plating the chimney's top cap, I put it in the lathe and pushed it onto a mandrel using the tailstock chuggers shown here. I didn't push the chimney too far onto the mandrel because I'm only going to be using some emery cloth on it. As you can see from this clip, the underside of the top cap is already copper plated. But nevertheless, I'm going to use emery cloth to clean it up. I'm applying painting type logic for this job. When you paint something, you roughen up the surface of the metal underneath, and then that gives a key for the paint. So I'm trying to do exactly that with the chimney's top cap. And the general idea is, once I've roughened up the top cap, I will sit it in the bath of copper sulphate for about two and a half to three hours while I get on with some other jobs in the workshop. And the plan is, once it's been copper plated, I'm going to put it back on the mandrel and polish it up using some wet or dry sandpaper followed by Scotch-Brite. Then I will use my polishing spindle to make it shine and finish off the job with some brass or wadding. After removing the chimney from the mandrel, here's the finish I got on the top cap. Quite smooth, but with scratch marks left by the emery cloth. Time now to prepare my copper sulphate bath for the electroplating. And I'm starting this off by cleaning the anodes. During the process, these anodes turn slightly red, so I'm removing the oxidisation. I rinse them in water to start with, and then I frequently rinse them in between cleaning. When I turn the anode over, you can see that on the other side is sort of a red sludge. It wipes off very easily. So I thought I would do that before I started. Both of the anodes are in the copper sulphate bath and this is my common rail cathode. It's a piece of copper pipe to which I attach the crocodile clips to at each end. Both of these are from the negative terminal. The red covered crocodile clips from the positive terminal connect to the anodes. Just about ready to go. The air stone is currently in the corner. I'm going to put it next to the anode. It's a good idea at this stage to turn on the air pump. The idea of this air pump is not to oxygenate the mixture. In fact, I think that is counterproductive. I've actually placed it right next to one of the anodes. And now it's time to hang the part that I want to copper plate from the crossbar using a bent piece of copper wire. You have to be careful when you do this because I do not want the rim of the part I want to electroplate to touch the bottom of the tank. I'd already estimated the voltage for this one to be around 3 volts and here it is, 3 volts which gives a current of 0.9 of an amp. Once I'd done this I just left it alone and got on with the job for the day. And 3 hours later when I took it out of the bath, this is how it looked. I'm a bit puzzled why the cap has plated OK, but the main barrel of the chimney hasn't and it's very patchy. And quite a lot of the area is completely unplated. But never mind, I didn't want that to be plated anyway. Time now to rinse it in water so I can clean it up. The quality of this copper plating was quite good and I was happy with it. After I spent some time cleaning it up using my polishing spindle, this is what it looked like. I also put it back on the mandrel in the lathe and cleaned up the main barrel of the chimney and now it looks like this. Unfortunately though, me being me thinks maybe I should put it in the bath for another three hours and that will give me quite a thick covering. I remember once having a conversation with a friend of mine who was an electroplater many many years ago and he was saying most of the work was nickel plating followed by chrome plating for vintage car parts. He gave me several polishing mops, which I still use, they've been really good. But I do remember him saying you need to get a really good finish before you plate. And this is one of the reasons why I'm repeating the process. I used exactly the same voltage setting, which gave me 0.9 of an amp as before. The air stone was positioned next to the anode as shown here from the previous clip. And I wondered whether it would be better if I moved it closer to the work to agitate it a bit. This time the electroplating results were quite different. 
The chimney in this image is my third attempt. The second plating came off like metal foil. Quite thick pieces of metal foil too. It was so bad I had to put the chimney back on the mandrel in the lathe and once again using emery cloth I removed the really scabby plating from the last attempt. I plated it again, this time I moved the air stone further away. And if you look closely at the surface of the copper sulphate you can see that it's moving even at the other side well away from the air stone. And that is all I need. When the air stone is too close to the part being plated the air bubbles seem to be a problem and the plating isn't very good. I would assume then that all you need to do is just keep the liquid moving. And the process was successful so I'm going to leave it here for the moment. Three and a half hours in my homemade and very modest plating bath gives this result which I think is okay. I could probably clean it up a bit more than this but no, enough is enough. The chimney now has a nice copper top to it. And I think it will be okay for the job. It's miles better than it was before I started doing this. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.